what's going on guys this is Tosker and uh, in the previous video we did just the XAML portion of this application uh, I did mention uh, we were uh, allowed to skip this if you choose to so uh, the code for the XAML will be provided in the description and I'm only going to provide the grid portion of this so let's say and the app.xaml but let's just say I'll copy and paste this if you want to put it into your application you go to your main window and here you will already see a grid but I've erased it and we just have our window here and all you would have to do is erase the existing grid and then copy and paste the following inside now you're also not going to have these styles right away so I'm also going to provide if you go to the app.xaml and here in our application resources I will also provide the code for the styles that we used then you should have uh, you should be able to compile everything successfully and if you don't leave a comment and I will do my best to assist you but with all that being said now we are actually going to move into the programming part of the tutorial where we're actually going to make this machine display inventory numbers and be able to purchase items and add items and etc and so without more babbling we're just going to jump right into it and we're going to start with our models so I'm going to we're going to hop over to slides real quick and we're going to review and think over what kind of models we will need for this application and then we're going to quickly come right back to here and start programming so like I mentioned we need to figure out what models we're going to use in this application and we're going to want to think of what models we will be needing in this application and what kind of objects do we need for the overall design one of those items is a vending item which basically is going to be just an object to represent items in the machine so uh, regular coke uh, diet coke and orange uh, soda all will be a vending item model a separate class that we're going to create we also need a vending bank model and you could argue that it's kind of poor naming but I couldn't think of much of a better one uh, this will represent payments the machine has collected and also pending payments to it so if I insert 50 cents this is going to be the model that's going to hold the data that says I inserted 50 cents and it's also going to be the model that holds the amount of money the machine collected once I make my payment. We also could have done a model for the overall vending machine, but given this being a small, simple application, I, I didn't find it quite necessary, and we'll be talking about that when we move on to view models. So without more talking, we're going to jump back over to Visual Studio and implement these models okay so now that we're back we're going to first uh, make sure our, our code is a little clean so we're going to create a folder and this is where we're going to create our models and then while we're already doing this we're going to also create one for view models which we're going to cover after this but first in our models we want to add a class and as we discussed we want to add a class called vending item and we're going to make this a public class and we're going to give it some properties one property we're going to want is an ID uh, a number that can uniquely identify the item that we are interacting with so we're going to create a public integer called ID with a get and set we're also going to need a name for this item so what it is called such as regular or diet soda or an orange soda so public string name make sure you set its get set properties and then we're also going to need to hold the value of the price of this specific item so we're going to do a public double whenever you're using money you should are dealing with a money value you should use a double and we're going to call this price and again get set now these are essential 
properties that need to be set to interact with this item at all. So I'm going to type in CTOR and hit tab twice. It will quickly create a constructor for us. And we want to make sure when, whenever you create a vending item, you have to supply these values, which is why we put it in the constructor so it can be uh, instantiated right off the bat. So we want an int ID as a parameter. We want a string name and also a double for price. And then when we instantiate it, we're going to create uh, the global ID here to the parameter, the global name to the name parameter, then the global price to a, uh, yes, the price parameter, okay? So we got our properties here and then we have to set these properties when we create the item. Next, we're going to create, if you can remember, a vending bank item or model uh, again for naming but couldn't think of anything better I'm going to create this to a public class as well and this is going to hold okay this is going to hold our payments so money we have received in the machine and it's also going to hold pending payments money that has been inserted in the machine but has not been used to purchase anything yet so again, because we're dealing with money, we want to use a double payments and another public double, and we'll call this pending. Okay. So here we go. We have our vending bank of our payments, money that has been approved and used, and then pending, which is money that has been inserted but not used. And just to go back over here, we have our item, which has an ID for uh, a unique identifier to this item, the name of it, the price of it, and in the constructor, we will set these properties. Now that we have our two models, we want to create some view models so we can actually start connecting our display we created here. We want to actually start connecting that to uh, manipulating the data in our code. And we're going to be doing this through our view models. So we're going to jump back to a slide for a few seconds and just overview what kind of view models we're going to want in our application. 